disappointing for Poland. And Damien, I suppose when we look back on that second half, uh, how crucial was that sending off? I thought it was massive, Peter. Um, obviously, they started like a house on fire in the second half, Poland. Uh, what we spoke about at half time, quickening up their play, yeah. more intensity, another couple of gears, and literally after 20, 25 seconds, they'd scored doing that exact thing. Um, they probed for 10, 15 minutes, and I think it's 16, 17 minutes later that the sending off happens. Um, I think it absolutely kills uh, the game for Poland. Uh, it's difficult at, at any level playing with 10 men. Um, and that's where I guess my issues with referees and VAR, you know, VAR can get involved in goals, penos, mistaken identity and direct reds. But for me, they should be allowed to get involved in indirect reds, as in when there's a second yellow, because it's absolutely nonsense that he got sent off for that. Um, no issues with, you know, guys that play tennis or something like that, because that ref has obviously played tennis and never played football. Because, <laughs> honestly, that's where, you know, people that have played football understand that is never a yellow card in anybody's life. Um, just a little body check. Uh, the first one, definitely. I mean, it might be a free kick, but not a yellow card. Oh, never. But, like, it's gone to a red, and that's where yeah. VAR for me, and obviously the ref's decision anyway with his naked eye, has to be so much better. It's influenced the, the way, you know... The game has gone. Three points at stake, European Championships, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, you were both very critical of uh, both bookings that uh, neither of you felt were worth um, yellow yeah. cards. Yeah, listen, the first one, there was a little tug. Um, it took the player three steps, I think, after he was tugged to look around and then fall over. But, but that's what players do these days, You can Kevin, understand why he, given, why he gave the yellow card for that. Um, yeah. They were breaking, he's tried to give him a little tug just to slow him down, so fair enough, yellow card. The second one, that's where he used common sense. He's, the player has, has reacted, so I think that's caught the ref's eye and seen him scream and shout and go down. But when you actually see a replay of it, it's just a little body check. Turn, I can't believe he's come. I think he's got the yellow card out, and all of a sudden he's realised he, he has to send him off the second yellow. He probably forgot. It's the first bad decision in the tournament from yeah. a ref. You know, the yeah. first time we've criticised. I suppose that's a positive. You know, the surprise has <laughs> taken this long. Um, and he's, he's just made the wrong decision. I don't think Poland were, you know, they came out quickly and scored. I don't think they were really at the races. After they scored the goal, they went back to how, to me yeah. anyway, they went back to how they were in the first half. Um, and seeing, you know, Slovakia on the pitch and how much it means to them. It shows, you know, how much underdogs they were and how much this min win yeah. means and how much of a surprise maybe it is or whatever. But seeing them on the pitch, they're celebrating like they've won the tournament. And great to see. They deserved it. They played really well. They certainly did. And the sending off was the pivotal point in that second half we just yet. Uh, Damien, we're going to look, first of all, we wondered how Poland would react and what they'd be told at half-time, and they did come flying out of the blocks in the second half. And said, ah, Souza has worked his magic, and uh, they're back in the game, and a very quick goal right after the restart. Yeah, it was a brilliant goal. It was great combination play on the side of the pitch, you'd have to say. At half-time, we're obviously talking about can they bring more speed, more tempo to the play, and like I said, the three-man involvement over here in the side is brilliant. They moved them about. Uh, takes the ball inside and obviously comes back out again. Um, it's a great goal, obviously a bit of a scruffy finish, but they moved the Slovakia defence around so well. Um, it's top, top class, but there wasn't enough of that. You didn't see that all night. Um, you know, the rest of their chances, they're trying to force things and Slovakia just cleaned up and, and ate it up, really. So, no, listen, a, a top goal, but like I said, for the quality that Poland have at times in the top end of the pitch, there wasn't enough. Yeah, it was a scruffy finish, Kevin, but it counted. And uh, they looked far more positive at the start of that second half, didn't they? They did. That, that was, what, 20 seconds in? But I, I don't know. I just saw that and you thought, this is it now. They're going to come yeah. and show what we taught beforehand and go on and dominate. And uh, maybe five or ten minutes, they looked sharp and quicker and they were spreading the play. And then they just went back to their old selves. The sending off came then around 65 minutes and that was just totally deflated them. Mm. They huffed and puffed then. And then in the last minute... Um, in the last minute, they had a couple of crosses where nearly got an end of the score. But up to that, it was really disappointing. Sneeze. This is the first one. This is the yellow card for Krzyczoyak. Um, this is probably deserved yellow card. Pulls him there. But wait, one, two, three, little look, and then I'll fall. Um, you know, but he still pulled him, and by the letter of the law, it is a yellow card. This is the one, you know. I didn't see him putting too many tackles other than this. And all he's done there, it's not even a body check. He's just gone to close him down, banged into him a little bit, and the ref because you like out with the yellow card. He was shocked in his face. I think he took that yellow out and realised, you know, forgot I'd booked him earlier on and have to send him off. That's the only reason why I can think he booked him for that. Um, reaction of the Slovakian player goes down, screaming, shouting, but it was a nothing tackle. Didn't deserve it. No. And it, um, 
And it wasn't no, that he was no. fouling prolifically in the game. He only exactly. had three fouls in total. Two of them were yellow cards. Yeah, it was. There was a lot worse went on, and that weren't booked. We were talking mm -hmm. about Duda coming back and fouling in the game and getting away with a lot of them. Um, and then, you know, Poland weren't going great at the game, but it, it ruined it as a spectacle. Um, took took the impetus out of what Poland's decent start to the second half was, and a really really big decision in yeah. that group. The only thing is, Kevin, you do see teams manage the game fine when they go down to 10 men. Poland didn't do that because no. they just weren't playing well overall, were they? No, listen, it's still not over. You're down to 10 men. We see it time and time again. Absolutely, you go down to yes. 10 men, you can still win the game. That's, that's no reason why, why Poland should have done fools and felt sorry for themselves. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just at the start, when they were coming out of the tunnel at halftime, we're talking about what they're going to do, and I see Lewandowski's the last one out and about 20 yards behind everyone else, and you're just thinking, he's the captain. Get out on the first. You know, you're our leader. We want to be inspired by you. OK, we're not as good as Bayern Munich. We can't put the ball on your feet and on your head to score all these goals, but, you know, he still had... You know, played the ball during the game and gave it away and looked lackluster and tired and was just, you know, cheaply bad touches. And you just, you know, just you get a sense that there's something not right in that push. They never, you didn't see any real urgency from them to come back into the game. They looked off the pace a bit. Lewandowski looked to me a bit like Harry Kane um, the other night. And, and, and it's so important to, to Poland for him to be the, the one and he wasn't. Um, at least for England, a lot of other players can make up for Harry Kane's lacklusterness. So, yeah, worrying for Poland, hard to getting back into it, into the group after that. Yeah, by the way, we've just learned that's the, that's the same referee who gave the penalty against Northern Ireland against Switzerland when the ball hit the players, clearly hit the players back. So he's, he's, he's not uh, unknown for giving uh, unusual decisions. It makes sense on paper and you'd see, yeah, uh, I'm this area and you're that area and, no, and don't let anyone score in your area and you tack the ball in your area and all that makes sense. But in reality, like a lot of things in football on, on paper look brilliant and then you go do them in practice and it's a complete disaster. And I did it a few times, a few different clubs and you might last a month doing it and the same argument comes back. Um, it wasn't my man, it wasn't my man, well he, I should have done this and, you should, yeah. and then we all end going back and back what's worked for a hundred years um, in the main is pick up and mark your man and then you can point fingers, fingers afterwards, what well, was your man scored? Just stop your man scoring. Um, listen, it's not foolproof either, obviously, but it makes it a lot simpler, a lot more straightforward. Zonal just opens up ambiguity and, and makes it easy for people to just hold their hands up and, and have no responsibility. Um, as I said, in my experience, you have two lads attacking it, Zonal, and that's great. They can go and have a free run and clear it and everyone else picks up. So, um, Yeah, it just... You know, all over Poland, and you look at it, Poland qualified easily from the group, like Ukraine, and you think Ukraine were really poor the other night. Poland had a, you know, did really well in the group qualified, and they got rid of their manager then as well. You, know, you wonder what was yeah. going on for them to yeah. qualify and qualify <clears throat> easily and get rid of their manager and bring in a new manager. And, you know, it's, a, it's madness when you think about it, and it sort of showed on the pitch tonight. I think the players, I don't know whether they don't believe in the manager, they had a poor, uh, poor warm-up in the last few games, and you think maybe they're just saving it for the tournament and, uh, you know, the warm-up games... He was Iceland to play, they were disappointing and they were getting a bit of criticism, but you give them the benefit of the doubt and think they're coming into the tournament and be ready to fire. And tonight it continued on their, their form in the friendlies. Yeah, not, not great. And uh, apparently there was an issue between the previous coach and Lewandowski, which emerged uh, during one of the interviews that Lewandowski gave after their Italy defeat. We'll talk about him very shortly, but first of all, we'll have a look at some of the chances Poland created, but nothing too clear-cut in the second half. No, it wasn't clear-cut, you know, and, and you think you they scored a goal so early and you expect them to have chance after chance now and they're going to dominate. And it wasn't. It was this sort of, you know, again, back here, lots of players back. Wasn't a great effort from, from Klitsch there in, in, in his glitch. I think on this one, heads over. Um, good ball in, Slacky, a lot of people back. Poor header, should do better than that. Um, this is right near the end. You know, that's, yeah. that's three chances. That was right near the end. I think Lewandowski got a tiny flick on it, went wide. And it's sort of embarrassing for Poland that this is all we have to show from, from 45 minutes of football when their tournament is sort of on the line here against the not an impressive side in Slovakia. That, that's a centre half. That was that was Bednarek in the 90th minute, and then we have Swiderski who came on off the bench. Not too bad, in fairness. Um, here's a good touch from Lewandowski, you know, straight at the keeper. But that was it for 45 minutes. You expect maybe the, you know, you're talking about Scotland today, and they had a couple of clear cut chances should have scored. There was no clear cut chance for for Poland apart from the goal. Um, yeah, just again. Really, it was very disappointing for them. Yeah, what will be the coaching judgment when Souza sits down to look at the video of this game afterwards, Damien? An awful lot of improving to do if they have to have any hope of progressing out of the group. Um, it sounds like he just has to keep Lewandowski happy and he stays in the job <laughs> if you go off the previous manager. Yeah. But like I said, you'd worry for them a bit. I'm, I'm not sure how, if he's put his stamp on the team. Um, and their next game against Spain, um, you can imagine Spain's going to dominate the ball. 
Uh, be interesting to see Spain tonight, whether they're a dark horse in this tournament. Um, they've obviously got the option of bringing 26. They only brought 23. No Real Madrid players. Enrique, real point to prove. Um, but Sousa tonight, I'm not sure where he goes from here with that because uh, they were a poor watch day, Poland. Slovakia, on the other hand, will look back with relish at the goals, obviously. But also, Damien, they, they did carry a threat going forward on occasion, didn't they? Yeah, it's bizarre as it makes. They obviously won the game, but they didn't create a lot of chances. But they did look the more dangerous team. And the, in the top end of the pitch, they had more creativity. They have that diagonal ball on lockdown. Harrisland here, who, you know, without the ball, dropped in as a second right back, so to speak, and cutting in here in a stronger left foot. Um, but they like to do the dropping deep. You see here, there's no strikers. Hamzik, who was worried about getting around the pitch, but I told you about his quality beforehand. Absolutely ridiculous. So. Not a lot of great chances. That's why Poland, in a way, will be kicking themselves the, the goal in the first half and obviously the one off the set piece. Um, but yeah, Slovakia did edge it and deserved to win. What about Robert Le Lewandowski? Uh, I mean, I, I asked beforehand, was it a one man team? But he, he is expected to carry them a lot on occasion. And when he has an off day, I suppose yeah. Poland have an off day. And that's what happened. Listen, I talked to him up beforehand. He's a fantastic player, obviously, world class yeah. player, but he, he wasn't tonight. Well, not the reason, you know, um, and you can say they don't have the quality to feed him, and you know, he doesn't get the same ball he does at Bayern Munich. But he still, you know, he can still control the ball, he can still find passes. You watch clip after clip here, it's. You know, this, this was in the first few minutes. Shot, this was summed up his night. Shots getting blocked. Um, you know, he never looked like he was going to break into a sprint to me. His mm. Movement wasn't as good as normal. Shots get blocked, stumbling, and falling over. Um, he just didn't look like the... Should have been Ballon d'Or winner this year. Um, the player who's 40-something goals in the league. Um, you know, again, bad touch on his chest. Stuff that he, you know, chests and volleys that. You know, he's... Mm -hmm. He's a fantastic centre forward. I don't like, I don't like being critical of him because of all he's done. But there, you know, chest from a different angle shoots well wide. Um, here's in the second half, and this is what he was sort of restricted to: come really deep, get the ball. You know, what's he doing out there? Get in, get in the pitch, and you say, as I said, he doesn't have the same players to feed him or whatever. It's not Bayern Munich, but it doesn't mean he should have bad touches. Doesn't mean. He should be coming out of the dressing room last when he's the captain, 20 seconds behind everyone. Just, you know, I just, it just didn't seem to me like he was up for today or there was something after happening behind the scenes. He was, from, from minute one, he, I don't think he sprinted in the game. Um, and I suppose if you're Polish players, and he's probably their hero, a lot of players, like mm. we looked up to, you know, in the earnings squad, Robbie Keane, you rely on him so much and he's the same for Poland and we might have been able to feed... Robbie or Damien probably was, but I mean, you might have been able to, but he, he came up with goals when it was important and... You know, that's what you're expecting Lewandowski to do here. But no doubt he, he'll get slaughtered again in the Polish media tonight. Like, I'd put a, an awful lot of onus on his teammates as well. Like, Lewandowski, as Kevin did a brilliant piece on him beforehand, he's amazing movements. You were giving marks out of 10, that's 10 out of 10. He's an amazing, amazing finisher, 10 out of 10. But if you think about pace, he's not explosive. Is no. he a dribbler? Has he got a trick? So he's not a player that can turn a game on his own. He needs players around him, and I think... That's always when it comes to major tournaments, that's, that's where Poland have lacked. He hasn't got the players around him because he yeah. is world class. And I was just thinking of the top strikers at the tournament so far. Lukaku really is the only one who has uh, come out firing on all cylinders, as, as you'd expect, coming out of a, a really good season. But Kane suffered yesterday, really yeah. didn't play well for England. And today, Lewandowski. Kane and Lewandowski look very similar. Both half a yard off it. You know, um, yeah. Kane, to me, lacked half a yard yesterday. It didn't look quite fit. Um, you know, a lot going on behind the scenes with him. You know, we spoke about it for a second. He was saying we can't believe he put in that transfer request so publicly and wanted to get sorted for the Euros, and now obviously it's not, and that's all he gets asked about. So you can see why he's off it. Lewandowski, I don't know. You know, I know he doesn't have the service, but it doesn't excuse him for bad touches and scrappy play. Um, he can still yeah. be neat and tidy and a decent player. He mightn't have the speed to do it all by himself, but um, you know, he still has, you know, was it 90... Something uh, forty something goals, ninety something appearances. So, so it doesn't affect him no. in other instances. He doesn't become he, a bad goal scorer yeah, overnight. He, he can that's score sure. in other international yeah. games when he doesn't have yeah. the same people around him. And whatever it is tonight, he just wasn't wasn't at the races. Well, hopefully, there's better to come for Robert Lewandowski later in the tournament.